In this video, we're going to talk about how to run portable side-by-side -side PowerShell Universal instances. If you'd rather read a blog post on this topic, we have a link to one in the description. So some reasons you'd want to run portable side-by-side -side PowerShell Universal instances is so that you can run multiple instances of PowerShell Universal on the same machine without having them interact with each other. This requires setting some configuration settings to store things like the repository, the database, and log files into their own isolated directories. This is great for testing different server features that may require different app settings at JSON um, settings, such as different database types or log levels, encryption keys, that kind of thing. We use this extensively in our development because we need to try to test all different kinds of configurations, um, whether it be different authentication types, um, base URLs, or um, HTTPS ports, that kind of thing. So the first step in actually setting up a isolated PowerShell Universal instance is to get the PowerShell Universal binaries into uh, that directory. You could use shared binary binaries, but in this case I'm actually going to put all the binaries into an app folder that is isolated to that app. So we're going to get this download started and I'll just walk through what this script is doing. So the first thing that it's doing is actually getting the latest version from our release blob and for v4, that would be uh, v4 version.txt. For v5, that would be v5 version.txt. And we just retrieve the content of that, and that will give us the version of um, PowerShell Universal that is the current version um, that is released. You could also put whatever version you want to potentially hard code into this version string here. Uh, next, we're going to set up a path to a temp directory where we can store a zip file that we're going to download. Um, if that file is already there, we're just going to remove it. Um, and then the next step is to actually download the zip. So uh, if you look at this URL, again, it's going out to our release bl uh, blob. It's passing in that version um, variable. Uh, that could be a hard-coded version um, if you were you know, trying to pin to a version. Um, and then part of that zip is the actual platform that we're going to be running on. If you're running on something like Linux, you could actually update this platform um, portion of the URL to actually download that. And you can go to our download page. We actually use these same URLs on the download page to actually see how that's formatted if you did want to update that URL. So um, as you saw, it just downloaded that zip. And then the next step is to actually create an app folder where we're going to extract the PowerShell Universal binaries to. So if that folder exists, we're just going to remove it and um, then expand the archive into that app folder so that we have all the latest binaries uh, available there. And then uh, we will call get child item to actually unblock all the files because Windows will kind of put a special tag on all the files that are downloaded in this way. And we just need to make sure we unblock them. Otherwise, PowerShell can have um, some problems loading things like modules and PS1s. So now that this is run, we've actually extracted all our binaries into this directory. And the next thing that we're going to do is actually set up a script to actually run PowerShell Universal in an isolated fashion. Um, what we need to do is actually modify some of these settings in appsettings.json to move them from a common application you know, directory, like program data, and store them directly in our PSU2 directory. So some of the things that we need to set uh, include the system log path, because that would be a common location, and then the repository and connection string. So the repository stores all your configuration files, such as your scripts and APIs, that kind of thing, go into the repository directory. And then the connection string is uh, for the persistence layer. And that is, uh, in this case, by default, uh, LightDB. And it is, again, stored in a common location that we want to make um, specific to this instance of PowerShell Universal. So in my run.ps1, what you'll see is that I've actually um, set up some environment variables rather than doing anything with that JSON file. So the PowerShell Universal configuration system, uh, not only does it look at um, app settings.json in several different locations, including one passed in on the command line, you can also set environment variables as well as command line arguments. But in this case, I'm going to use environment variables for simplicity. So the first thing is I have a um, param for the port at the top. Um, this allows us to customize the port when we run the script. And um, then we have several environment variables. First is a repository. I'm going to use a PS script root for everything. So that's going to create a repository folder directly in my PSU2 um, directory. 
Then I'm going to set the connection string to a data source that is pointed to my PS script root again, which is database.db. I'm actually sw switching over to light or SQLite. We're actually removing LightDB support in version 5, so I encourage everyone to use SQLite instead of, for your defaults. Um, then I'm setting the port. So again, we can customize that via param, but I'm defaulting it to 5000. And then I'm setting the system log path. So all these things are now going to be isolated to PSU2, and they're not going to interact with any other instances of PowerShell Universal. So let's actually take this, and I am going to run that in a Windows terminal. So I'll just copy that path, and we're going to look at that. So now you can see PowerShell Universal is starting up. We're seeing it you know, um, log directly to the console. And it is also logging to our local directory here. So you can see system logs, the same logs are showing up inside this logs directory. It's created the database in this folder, as well as a repository directory for our configuration files. So let's pop over to a um, browser. So I'm actually going to go to port 5000. And you can see here, I am now accessing that local PowerShell Universal instance that's running out of my portable directory. Uh, and if we look in here, you can see that we don't really have any, or we don't have any configuration. So let's actually go ahead and create a script called script, script one. And now we have a script created. Uh, if we go look at scripts, it's there and everything. And if we go back to VS Code, and you look into repository directory, you can see that now it is storing our configuration files directly into the local repository in this PSU2 folder so that it's isolated from any other instances of PowerShell Universal. So at the same time that we're running this server, let's spin up another one. So I'm actually going to take these two scripts and then copy them into my PSU1 uh, directory. We're going to run the update script um, to get the application files directly into this um, folder. Again, this could be a great way to test upgrades and that kind of thing because you could uh, realistically pin to a different version here, verify that your database and your configuration scripts and that kind of thing still work um, on the new version without affecting any instances of PowerShell Universal you may be running elsewhere, like your production instance. Now that our file download has completed, we're expanding our archive into the app folder. As you can see, it created an app folder inside PSU1 instead of PSU2. So I'm actually going to go to my run.ps1. Let's change the port to 5001 and save this. And all the other options are the same because they have been, um, they're relative to this folder, so we don't have to actually change any paths. And we're going to run this PS1 um, in a separate terminal. So we still have uh, our first instance of PowerShell Universal running. And now we're going to run our second one. So again, you're going to see it uh, print out the kind of startup sequence log here. And now all the uh, configuration data is actually going into the PSU1 folder rather than the PSU2 folder. So we again have a database a blank repository, logs, and our application data. So let's go back to our browser, and let's change this over to 5001, and log in. So it's not actually using the same login details. The issue is that I had a cookie stored, so if I were to log out, log back in, this is actually using login data from PSU1. And what you'll see is that there are no scripts in here because the configuration data is in a different location than it was with PSU2. So let's create script123. Click OK. Our script's been created. If we go to scripts, you'll see script123 is listed here. And if we go back to our universal um, example here, PSU1 now has a universal folder with our script for script. 123 and script123.ps1. So these two instances of PowerShell Universal are now completely isolated from each other. They're running at the exact same time, just on two different ports, and they're writing to two different directories with two different configuration settings. So like I said, this is great for quickly testing certain things, different server features, different configuration options, um, different resources that you've added to PowerShell Universal, or for upgrades. This is a great way to test upgrades without uh, affecting your current version of PowerShell Universal by isolating it to a folder um, and testing there.